In today's episode, we're working on a four terabyte Western digital hard drive that belongs to Spyglass family. Before we start, guys, if you're interested in data recovery, subscribe to this channel and uh, like and comment. It really helps our videos uh, get more exposure. Uh, so I really do appreciate your support like that. Basically, everything that Western Digital makes in this kind of format, two and a half inch drive, four and five terabytes in size, they belong to uh, Spyglass division now uh, there are different variations of spyglass drives that are out there like ultra spyglass 2 spyglass 3 now uh, all these drives basically are built on similar architecture but firmware structures within those different families they may vary so this specific unit was dropped a client dropped it when it was off power and when that happens the head assembly that was resting on that orange plastic parking ramp was repositioned onto the disk surface but if that happens when the drive is not spinning up those heads will lock up disks just like brakes do on the car and imagine yourself sitting on your driveway you put your car in the drive position but your foot is still on the brake uh, the car is not going anywhere even though it could roll if you release that brake while you're holding that brake down it's not going anywhere the only difference between that and the hard drive is that the hard drive doesn't have a brake pedal and when those brakes engage they get stuck so the only way to deal with it is to remove the original head assembly uh, with force minimizing the effects that it's going to have and the effects can be extremely bad if you're not familiar with the repair process or you have never done it before or if you don't do this for a living so I would first of all suggest watching this video till the end and do not attempt to do this at home. You will kill your drive and you will kill a donor if you attempt to do that with a donor as well. So because we don't know this condition of heads that are below the top one and there's 10 of them in total, um, we would prefer to remove the parking ramp completely because if one of those heads is twisted and it's uh, not gonna line up with the parking ramp well the head assembly is just gonna get mashed up completely so removing that head assembly parking ramp out our heads are free to slide right off the disc surface now some may argue all oh, of this is destructive to the heads and yes of course it is but heads are replaceable surface is not so if you're gonna end up damaging the surface more it may become impossible to recover data later on at hdd recovery services uh, we do not reuse heads after they've been released on stuck head drives basically it's a small cost that you're saving but it could have tremendous consequences if things go wrong if the head assembly survived the release, it's best to verify that on a donor and then repurpose that donor for other work if those heads are working great. Taking a gamble on the patient's drive who is paying you money to get this done is not the right way to go in my opinion. So we use working confirmed heads from donor devices to replace the originals. If heads get stuck on a disk like that, it's probably one of the most predictable scenarios in data recovery industry. If the drive is not spinning, it cannot harm itself any further. So as long as the technician who is handling the case is familiar with the procedure that it requires, your data will most likely come back as a full recovery. Labeling components as you move along is also a really good tip because uh, that will prevent you from mixing parts up. The only thing that is absolutely unique to your drive is your serial number. So that's what we use to mark up parts. Usually use like last four digits of a serial number or last three digits of a serial number. And uh, for this specific unit, even though it's not essential uh, tool, but it's definitely a very helpful tool. This head comb that's made by HDD Surgery, and I'll put those guys' links in the description. It's not a sponsored video. I buy all my tools from them, and I have been buying my tools from them for many years. With that being said, there are other companies that make head combs who are great alternatives, but I feel like that's a great topic for a separate video, so we'll do that sometime later. Although 
heads can be spread apart individually using even like household items, to be honest. Having tools that are specifically designed for the architecture of individual models is a great help and much more precise, much more accurate, saves you a bunch of time during the process. So what do these head combs do? Well, they keep heads apart from touching each other when the head assembly is out of the hard drive and out of the parking ramp. It's important to do so because even closing the gap between head sliders can bend them, can damage them, make them unfunctional. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. The cost of these donor hard drives sometimes can be pretty ridiculous. On some uh, websites, these donors can go up to like $350 a piece. So if you ruin the head assembly, that you pay $350 for just to use for parts, well, that's the $350 that you're never gonna see again. So once the head assembly is out, we can now relocate that donor head assembly into the chassis of our patient. This is called a head swap. In the next few weeks, I'll be making an announcement about our Patreon that I'm setting up right now. A lot of you guys who already run data recovery businesses uh, that are fairly new to this or just thinking about starting a data recovery company will find tons of useful information on that account. In order to work on exposed hard drives, you do need to create a clean room environment. The work that is done on drives when they're opened up is always performed inside of a laminar flow cabinet. The cabinet that I use is fairly big. It's six feet wide and four feet deep. So often enough, it looks like I'm just working on a regular table, but we do have massive HEPA filters above our head and three impellers blow the air inside of the cabinet, purifying the air that surrounds the drive. Now there's gonna be some particles landing on the disc no matter how clean the environment is because the gasket on the drive itself is made out of silicone, the dust will get in it, and when you crack open the lid of the drive, some of those dust particles will settle on disc. Before the drive gets sealed up and powered on, we need to make sure that that top surface is clean. Now that the mechanical process is done, we need to patch the firmware and set up the disk imaging process. If you guys lost data on a similar device, link in the description will take you to our website where you can request that service. Be on the lookout for that Patreon in a couple of weeks.